Good morning, Kevin here. I'm out on a walk all on my own. I decided to, before it gets too hot, come out on a walk. And a walk that I haven't done for a long time. And I'm walking around to my right hand side. I've got the River Rother. And I've just come past an Anne's Hill, which is up there, followed the river round from um, the wharf, which is where the industrial estate is. So I'm heading along here. There's a lot of people out today. Um, being Friday. So we're gonna head along here and we'll be have the, the Caldry ruins on our right hand side soon. So we'll have a look at those as we walk past. Well, I'm at the side of Keldry Ruins now, and it doesn't, it seems today, wherever I go to try and do this, there's something going on. Just back over this way, um, I wanted to do a bit of filming from a bridge. Let me just get back over here by this wall. And it's just beyond the, the gates there, by the big pillars, but there was two ladies there with dogs, in the water, which is fine, but of course you, what you don't want is two yapping dogs. So these are the, the arms houses, or the estate houses, shall we call them, just here. With the lovely um, roses and rhododendrons, uh, sorry, hydrangeas there. Just in front of me there we've got the grain store. And as you can see we've got this van. When I was just about to start filming just a moment ago, it came through a gate which is just over there which is an electronic gate so that's making a big whirring noise so i've had to delay a lot of my filming until i get to this point which is a lot quieter Well, I've got the, the Caldry ruins just behind me, just over there. And as you can see, all these white marquees, this is for um, the prestigious Gold Cup season um, with Polo. And I believe they've already had the semi finals, which was the other day. Um, and I'm assuming the finals will be this weekend. I've got no, no idea who's, who's gonna be uh, in the finals at all, but the sun's gradually getting higher in the sky and we've had some incredibly high temperatures over the last couple of weeks and the forecast is for it to get hotter. Um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, 40 plus possibly. They've they were, um, issued a, an extreme weather warning um, with a, you know, could, the heats could, that we're gonna get could cause deaths, which is very worrying. My house has been literally shut up tight. The only windows that are open are my bedroom windows and they're open wide, but I've got shutters inside. They're closed up. All my windows, downstairs, curtains, blinds, shutters are all closed all day long. That keeps the house cool. The idea of opening your windows to let air in doesn't work. You're letting the hot air in 
keep the hot air out. So I've just come through this little, almost like a tunnel on this footpath, which a lot of you will remember from me doing these walks in the past. So I'm gonna head up round the polo field where all the activity is and just have a look and see what's going on there. With the preparations for the Gold Cup final. And these are the lawns polo fields. <coughs> so here we are. This is the lawns polo fields just here. Let me just have a wander up and show you what we've got here. You've got these different areas set aside for people to come and sit. People have all their own marquees. And just here is the main stand where the commentator would normally sit. But it looks to me, and I might be completely wrong, as if they're setting up the other field over that way for the, for the polo, for the final. This is normally the main field, the main polo field that they play on. These watering machines are un unbelievable. Just look at the length of these things. And you've got the, the, the water sprayers coming out of different positions all the way along these arms just here. You've got one that's just there, just right in front of me there. So you've got a sequence of these going along the bar all the way along both sides. The pipe is connected up just there to the mains so that runs along here and up into this machine. And with the pressure thing, it works. I think the pressure works it. And then it just rolls up through the, along the polo field, which is rather amazing. And then what they do is I think they connect it up possibly to the other way round, and then it comes back down. I have seen one working in the past, but not on, not on this, uh, on, a, on a, a crop field somewhere. And here we have the scoreboard here. Oh, the clock that tells you they're counting down the time. And then there's another machine, watering machine there. Just here, this is where when the polo ponies are in, be, being used for the chuckers, they are tied up here, but they're under cover, which is fantastic because of the, the weather we're getting at the moment, it's just terrible. In the past, they would be just completely open, just like these ones here, you know, completely open. The polo ponies would be standing here, perhaps kicking some dust up or something. But there's several of these and they've got a trough here for water. Um, and then there's another series of positions for um, the polo ponies to go into. And just here, this is where they can hose the polo ponies down to keep them cool. And here we are, we're almost by the the uh, other polo thing and it says car parks three and two and a food stop up there. Well I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to walk up the side of this polo field. I've just been talking to somebody and they were saying that the semi-finals were played over there and the finals are being played here. And the finals are being of this weekend. Um, so just have a wander up here. Very, I might get challenged by somebody, but if, that, if I do, that's fine. But here we are, this is the field, polo field. And this is the boards, the running boards at the side where um, 
the, the ponies, you know, they do cross over here because these polar ponies are travelling at 30 miles an hour. And this is where parking, you get all the car parks in here. And this is, gives them front row seats. Uh, so they've got the, the you know, grandstand um, viewing point. And then you've got these marquees here to my left. And then you've got the grandstand here, which this has been built specially because it's not usually one here, but it's just for Gold Cup time. Commentators box up the top there. So again, as we come up this way, we've got tables and chairs over here waiting to be uh, waiting to be set up. And you've got a little square marks on the ground here. Now I'm guessing that when the trophies are being or the trophy is being presented and photographs are being taken. That's the central spot right in front of the grandstand. And more marquees over here, look. Potted plants all around, the tables are all in now and set up. You've got all this rattan furniture waiting to be set up and put out. And then you've got this box here. But this might be the main uh, commentator's box, I don't know. I thought it'd be the one on the grandstand, but it's probably in there. And then you've got this, this is the prestige area, I'd have thought, with all these tables and chairs, look at them all set out. And uh, as I say, more potted plants everywhere. It's a lovely event, it's a prestigious event. It's the main event in the polo season that every polo team wants to win. So you, you've got that on your CV you've done very well. Beautiful bronze statue just here. I wonder if I can just sneak in and get a closer look at that. It tells us there's a plaque here. Still water. Nick Fibian Green, bronze 2021, courtesy of the artist and Sladmore Gallery. For further information, contact them. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely stunning. Let's have a look from the side. So far, no one's challenged me, so I'm rather glad about that. And it says over there on the thing, welcome Caldry Park Gold, Gold Cup 2022, and you've got a bar set up over there as well. So I'm rather pleased that I'm actually filming this now you know at the end of the day this is a uh, my channel Kevin's Rambles channel is non-profit making uh, I don't make anything from adverts um, so you know for me to film and, and put something out it's you know it's, it's 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 in a sense free advertising for events like this that I actually film at so it's not, uh, not as though I'm going to make a lot of money out of them. More tables and chairs have been set up just here, look. More marquees all the way around. These guys work for Keldry, Keldry Park. Just out here to my left hand side, we've got a fun fair being set up ready for the weekend. <clears throat> And again, more and more marquees. It is a huge, huge event. And because of the, because of the weather, there's going to be several thousands of people down here uh, enjoying the, the polo. But the forecast is for temperatures, as I said earlier, perhaps up into 40 plus. So that's going to be extremely hot for he everybody. <clears throat> They've even got a finger post up there telling you where where things are. An old double-decker bus up over there. And there's a marquee that says uh, US Polo Association, I think it says.
these, there's another one of these booths over here, two-tier booth, and it says uh, www.showhire.co.uk. So these are obviously things that they might be for different types of commentators and things like that. But masses of work going on here. Advertising, hoardings everywhere. <coughs> Another finger post up here, just in front of me, directing people different places. Lots and lots of, of um, toilets for people to use, which obviously is vital. But yeah, huge, huge assignment to get this all set up. There's a little, what looks like a little bar here. You know, a little old vehicle. Let's have a look at that before we press on. The one thing I've remembered is I forgot to bring my other GoPro with me. Look at this, Jacques Bar. Lovely old vehicle. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've forgotten to bring my other GoPro with me. <coughs> Which is a bit of a nuisance because I haven't charged the batteries up for this GoPro. I've gone through two already and I'm on my last one, which is a disaster. So, uh, I don't know how much more video I'm going to get done today, but um, that's leaving that lot behind me. And I'm heading up to Keldray Cafe now. Let's see if I can get some, get a cup of coffee. So here we are, it's all, it's all screened off as you can see. And that stops people getting in there and having a look and see what's going on. But can I just say one thing on my videos? I've got 612 subscribers. Um, and I think what some people do, they subscribe to your channel. And then as soon as you subscribe to them, they stop subscribing you. It's just to get, this, get their subscriber numbers up, which is really annoying. But I've, had, I've heard some figures is that about 30 to 40% of the views on each video are by non-subscribers. The word subscribe is a little bit misleading because it doesn't cost you anything. It's just their termino um, YouTube's ter terminology to get you to support um, different channels so it is totally free so please if you watch the videos and you're not a subscriber can you please press the button that says subscribe there's a little bell icon there press that and that will also give you an update of when a new video is uploaded and then make a comment nice ones please um, and hit the like button all these algorithms as they call them from YouTube are very important to people like me you know some people they sit in their rooms and they do nothing and they earn an absolute fortune from YouTube and that's no exaggeration some people would just literally video what they do on their day out it might be shopping going to Iceland, Sainsbury's or whatever, and they're making a fortune from advertising. Myself, Cynthia and Steve, we walk miles and miles and miles to get the content for our videos. And all the people that subscribe to me that know our videos, um, they know the distances we walk to bring content to you. So please try and support us, subscribe to the channel, you know, we would, we would appreciate it. We'll even give you mentions. If you want to have a mention on um, a video, send us, a, send us a message and you can find us on Facebook, Kevin's Rambles Facebook page or Kevin's Rambles group. Come and join us on the group. 
all these things would be great. I do organised walks. Sometimes they're well supported, sometimes they're not. The next one is at the end of this month, which has been led by Andrew Norris, who is in the UK at the moment, but lives in, the, in Croatia. So looking forward to that very much. But please, just give us that light. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wander up here now in the shade, because the sun's really beginning to get up now. And I'm gonna go and get myself that cup of coffee. Well, if you've liked to, uh, or liked or enjoyed today's video, then please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the bell icon, and that will give you a notification when the next video is live. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.